Well, God bless you, Bishop Shaver here, and we're excited today is National Day of Prayer Day, and as every day should be, that we pray uh, for our leaders, pray for this nation. And, you know, as we see what's happening with the Supreme Court and we look at uh, Roe v. Wade, uh, the abortion issue, uh, there's a great division in this nation, and there's so many that uh, want to take the side of abortion, pro-choice. There's so many that are saying for pro-life. and But we go to the Bible. And, you know, I was thinking about that, and so I said, let me find out what is the definition of murder? What is the definition of it? And so as I looked it up, it, it, it said that murder is the taking of one's life without just cause. And so I look at this right here, and I said, so that means that, you know, we're looking at abortion as being murder. Well, you know, it's a woman's body. It's her her rights, it's her health, and uh, but we know that. Listen, uh, when we look at this, 99.9 percent of all pregnancies, okay, do not require the taking of a life of a baby, and so we just pray that in this, that the innocent life of a child is allowed to live. You know, I think it's kind of strange that the ones that weren't aborted don't care for the life of the others and so they don't care if they get aborted or not oh it's a woman's health this these babies these children have their own identity their own fingerprints their own dna uh and so when we look at this right here the mother that is carrying them you know uh we see that she's feeding them and taking care of them but god has created them to be an individual and when they are birthed they come with their own mindset. They come with their, own, you know, their own uh, talents and gifts. And so, when we look at this, what we're saying is, we want to let them live. One may be the one that's going to uh, have the uh, mind to cure cancer. One may have the mind to come up with the greatest invention man's ever known. We don't know. One may be a, an evangelist, a preacher, a missionary, a pastor, a bishop. We don't know. But I'm saying we have to take a stand for pro-life. And so, you know, when Cain killed Abel, of course, this wasn't abortion, but when Cain killed Abel, it said his blood cried out. And God came to see what was going on, and he had to address murder, uh, the first murder that had taken place in the Bible. And so uh, I just pray over this nation that we're going to come to our senses. We're going to come to the place that we understand that as believers, as we have conservative values, godly values, that we will stand to uphold the Word of God. You know, as the disciples had said, we ought to obey God rather than man. And so today, be praying that this nation will return to the values that are outlined in the Word of God, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, that we will return to a nation that has not only compassion, but a nation that provides safety for the unborn child. And so I'm asking you to do this. Pray the will of God. Second Chronicles, and I'm going to read it to you right here. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. And it says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. We pray that. We pray, God, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our complacency. Forgive us, Lord God, for allowing such laws as Roe v. Wade to take place. Forgive us, Lord God, for CRT in the schools. Forgive us, Lord God, for sexual education to kids in kindergarten. Forgive us, God, for this right here, because we know what is right. We know what is the truth. And we know that this nation has erred from the Word of God. So we pray that in forgiveness that we come back, we're restored, and make America great again. God bless every one of you. And so in the name of Jesus, we ask you to pray the will of God.